Welcome back, Rise Up Nation, for another edition of Rise Up in Real Estate. And I'm this is probably the most excited I've been for an episode in as long as I can remember because we got breaking news. We've got an exciting guest on the show. We've got things that you're going to want to listen and tune into. But most of all, I want to introduce you guys to a friend of mine. Her name is Amy Lessinger. Amy, I'm so glad you're on the show today, and I couldn't be more happy to have you here. Hey, how are you? Thank you for asking me to be on your show, my friend. You and I go way back, so it's great to be here. We do. We were. I was talking to Tyler Morton a few days ago, and Tyler said that we all, the three of us, met each other in Hawaii way back when at the PBS, way back when. Um, and I couldn't remember when you and I met, but it's just such an honor. I, I should congratulate you. This is Amy. I just can't even believe I'm going to say this out loud. Amy has just been named the new president of Remax. I think it's called Remax Worldwide. I mean, you're the you're the you're the head of the whole thing. That's incredible. Congratulations. I am responsible for leading this incredible brand across the world. So yes, it's it is my honor, and I'm very very excited about it. So this is great timing for the show for you and I. I mean, I pinched myself. I literally did the other day when this whole announcement was made. I said, I have the luckiest guy in the world. It's like I just hit the jackpot that I already had this scheduled because probably if I tried to schedule this now, it would be a little bit different. So I'm so glad we had this scheduled. But uh, I, I mean, I could go on and on about this uh, for you, Amy. How many, just put it in perspective for me, how many agents does that encompass worldwide? That Because I'm responsible for a few hundred and it makes me like nervous. How, what is your scope now with your leadership we have just under 160,000 agents across 110 countries can you believe that i mean I, that's huge that's amazing <laughs> that i mean that's almost more children that's as many children as i have no I'm just <laughs> that is 160,000 so you can't think of it like that like because you're so people you're such a people person if you thought deep about all of those individuals it's just a little bit overwhelming but Congratulations, my friend. I'm so excited. But let, before I gush, like I just did for the 10 minutes before we were on the call, <laughs> I want to I want to dive in and I want to I want you to tell our listeners and, and we're in coastal South Carolina, by the way, for the listeners that are outside of the area. Um, and Amy is I'm, we're filming this. She's in Denver, Colorado, right? You're out, out there in Denver yep. at Remax headquarters. We are. Yes, we are in our studio that we have right here at headquarters with this amazing team. That's incredible. I, I, my good friend, Tom Maynard, I'm sure is there. That's right. I'm so, He's so here. excited. I love Tom. I can't wait to see Tom at R4 in a few weeks. Um, tell me your journey, like get all the way back, Amy, to when you were, where were you born? <laughs> and then bring it oh, all God, up to today. We have to go way back now. Yeah, like 29 you know, years ago. A long ago. time ago, right? 29 was, years ago. Yes, I was born in Reno, Nevada. So I am a Nevada girl. And, uh, you know, grew up there, went to college there. Um, and, you know, right out of college, I knew that I was not going to be a speech pathologist and audiologist. That is what my degree is in, which is so odd, right? Because it's totally not related to real estate. But I say I use my degree every day. You know, when mm -hmm. you go through college, you learn how to solve problems in a finite period of time with finite resources. And mm -hmm. that's life, right? So, uh, you know, my dad was a developer. And I said to him, Dad, I just don't, you know, I just don't think the speech pathology thing is going to be for me. I'm pretty goal oriented, pretty driven. And he said, why don't you try real estate? So I, he introduced me to Susie Botsford, who was an incredible mentor of mine. She was a Remax agent. I met with her. I called her, I don't know, two days later. And I said, I'm going to take the plunge. And she said, I thought I talked you out of it. <laughs> and so... I went in and I said, look, I'm going to give it, you know, two to three years, which is exactly what I would have given my master's degree. And I'm going to go to every training I can go to. And I'm going to get, you know, my, my next level education in uh, real estate. And I fell in love with it and the rest is history. So I was a team leader or an agent first, of course, then went on to be a team lead leader and then was a broker owner, just like you, my friend, for our wonderful Remax network. Uh, we... Uh, my partner and I had three offices. Uh, we had about 135 agents, sold the brokerage about three and a half years ago, and came over to this side. So that's the Reader's Digest version, but you know, here we are. Yeah, that's, uh, it's amazing. So you, out of college, you didn't do, uh, you didn't follow anything with your, your degree. You decided oh. to get right into real estate. Was that with Remax at first or was it with a different brand and then you transitioned over to Remax? Yep, I started at a training company. So 18 months in the business and then I met my longtime Remax broker, uh, Gary Canepa, who was my mentor. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have found my tribe. 
and I joined Remax and never looked back. I mean, so pretty much I've been there for the duration of my career. Do you remember what year that was that you joined Remax for the yes, listeners? Yes, 1996, I think. Oh gosh, long 19. time ago. Might have been 1998. In the, in the Don't late 90s. On that. It's in my bio somewhere. It's. I think it's. I got to think about this. It might be 98. Okay. Yeah, I'll attach. I'm going to attach your bio to the show notes, so yep. it'll be there for everybody to see. But li regardless, late '90s, so 26 uh, ish years ago. 26 years. Um, yeah. Good for you. I mean, that that's amazing. That's an amazing. I talked to Keith Ard this week, and he wanted yes. to say he could not speak highly enough about you. And uh, I know from being out nice. west, um, he's a, you know, I, I call him on occasion to get his pulse because on the East Coast in South Carolina, we. We're a little bit slower than what goes on on the West Coast. It takes us a minute, and but once we figure it out, we figure it out. So I was asking him on some trends, and he was he was bragging about you, and it said that you know oh, he had already te already texted with you and congratulated and all that. So twenty seven years. A great that leader. He is an incredible leader. So that's a, yeah. that's a big compliment. Yeah, that's uh, that's fun to talk about that stuff. So you you to me, I'm impressed. 27 years with the same brand and I commit to not ever make this a Remax commercial, but I'm, <laughs> I'd be remiss not to talk a little bit about it since you're, uh, you're at headquarters and now you're in the pilot's seat. Although I know your perspective is that that's probably the least important seat in your mind. Like our seat's probably more important than yours. You would say, I see you nod your head. Um, so what, what, what caused you to stay for so long? I mean, there's so many shiny objects, so many changes. Sure. Gosh, I mean, look at Dave. Dave's been 51, 52 years and seven recessions later, all these changes. You've had tons of opportunities, let's be honest. You've sure. been recruited. You've been of offered the carrot. What made you stay for so long with Remax? You know, I think it was being around the best. It's the caliber of the agent. It's the quality of the agent. We don't we don't have just a few great agents. We have great agents everywhere. We lead. That's one of our dominant factors that we have is that our network is so strong. We're the most experienced. We're the most trusted. We're the most professional. And I didn't want to be good in this business. I wanted to be great. And I knew that if I wanted to be great, I needed to surround myself with agents who were selling more than I was, who had more experience than I did. And that really attracted me to the network for sure, right off the bat. Yeah, that's, that's a good answer for that. I love that. And this is a kind of off the beaten path question, but what did you have in your mind? Like when you came as an agent, were you thinking, Hey, one day I'm going to build a team. Hey, one day I'm going to own a brokerage. Hey, one day I'm going to run the whole thing. <laughs> or did you just, <laughs> Was it kind of just you being great in every level just led you there? Like, tell, tell me about that journey in your, in your mind as it all unfolded. You know, I, I don't think right off the bat when I started that I saw the progression. I think once I joined Remax and I saw that there were teams out there and I saw, you know, the example that my broker, Gary, you know, set for me, that I, I started to think bigger and dream bigger. And, and so it, then it became, you know, much more of a drive for me, understanding that if I wanted to accelerate my results in sales, for example, that I was going to have to multiply my time. And, you know, that was, that was the, you know, evolution of becoming a team. And then, you know, honestly, I said to my broker, Gary, after a number of years, I said, you know, I really want to do what you do one day. And he took me under his wing. He mentored me. He suggested that I, you know, get on the professional standards committee, for example, at the local board so that I could really start to under understand the intricacies of the business, mm -hmm. you know, all of those things. And, and uh, he brought me into lots of discussions and really pushed my education toward the brokerage side. And, you know, so I knew, you know, midway that I wanted to become a broker for sure. Yeah. That's interesting. And then, and then it sounds like you're just an opportunist like you. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're a growth minded woman, uh, clearly. Sure. And we'll talk about that in a minute with your position. So it's always fascinating to me when I talk with someone like you, because I, I consider myself a consumer. Like I, and we're trying to learn, like I've, today I've listened to so much content already, okay. trying to keep on the cutting edge for the number of agents that we're responsible for, because I'm not in the, I'm not in dining rooms and in cars every day like they are, but I'm trying to stay current. Um, how do you, what do you see? And I'm always fascinated when I talk to someone at your level, because you probably hear things I don't hear. So what is your crystal ball like going forward? You can either answer it one of two ways, since it's, things have morphed over the last few days since we talked. 
answer it for, um, you know, for you, like as a industry leader, like saying, hey, I think the real estate market will do this over the next 24 months. Or if you want to chat a little bit about what your your goals and uh, um, progressions are for the Remax brand, you're welcome to talk about that as well. Sure. So we can, either, we either path. Both. We could do both. Um, we don't have to choose. Isn't that fun? We can, we yes. can do both of those. Yes, because um, it's my show. It's my show. That's we can right. do whatever You're we want. in charge. <laughs> you are in charge. So, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about my evolution here and yes. a little bit about what I see for Remax going forward. You know, I truly, you know, I remember flying into Denver years ago for various broker events, et cetera, and I thought, I could live here. I remember walking into headquarters one day and I just was in awe and I, I just loved it. And I thought, hmm, maybe I'll work here one day. And it's just funny how the universe works. The sale of the brokerage was in the works two years prior. So I knew that I was going to do that because it was time for my next evolution. I really wanted a bigger platform to take you know, all of that experience and really benefit brokers and agents. And so when I was uh, approached with the opportunity, I jumped at the chance because it's a network that I love. It is an industry that I love. And it, it's given me the ability to have a voice at this level to serve and support, you know, agents and, and brokers and help them make sure that, you know, we remain cutting edge that, you know, in my view, you know, what's next, what's our future? First of all, always a goal is to make our agents more productive. So everything that we do here, I always look at it through a lens of, does it make our agents more professional, productive, and then those things ultimately lead to productivity, right? Or, or profitability. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'll say it again, professional, productive, and then ultimately profitable. You know, I think that's that's really the lens that I look through. And then for our brokers, you know, does it help them attract an agent that they want, keep an agent that they have, and then help them make their agents more profitable, productive, you know, and professional? All of those things are, are kind of the lens that, that I look through. And so as we look forward, you know, it is my goal, of course, to continue this path of us being the worldwide leaders. That is our mission. That is everything that we are here to do. We have an incredible network, an incredible footprint, but growth is at the forefront of that. So, you know, here in the U.S., growing, um, you know, our U.S. agent count, of course, and not just growth for growth's sake, right? You know, you see all kinds of companies do that. You know, we really are here. We build high producing agents. If you want to be great in this business, in my opinion, this is the place that you that, that you come. It's that mm -hmm. simple because everything that we do is designed to elevate an agent in their professionalism, elevate their ability to sell more houses because that's done through, you know, our tech suite, it's done through um, you know, being among other leaders, it's done through education, and it's done through broker support, which I think gets minimized these days where it's like you've got one broker for a region, so to speak. And when you have a transaction that's going awry, that's a tough one. That's a really, really tough one. We've all had that where we needed to call our broker. And I think our our system is unique in that way because we've got Tad and Mandy with their boots on the ground. When you need help and your transaction's going awry, you pick up the phone and you know what? Tad and Mandy answer. You don't have a bot mm -hmm. answering you. And I think that's something that in our industry, we really don't talk that much about. And so going forward, you know, it is time for us to make bold moves, to innovate, um, to make sure that we are equipping our agents to succeed no matter what the market conditions are. So, you know, that's on the Remax front. Um, as far as what I see market front wise, you know, honestly, you know, I think we all know it, it's no surprise. The interest rates are gonna continue to bump around just like they have been. And so, you know, but what's happening is demand is starting to creep up and life events are starting to creep in where people have been in love with their rate for a long time, but they're having children, you know, they are getting married, they might be getting unmarried. You know, all of those life events start to precipitate the need to move. And you've got a lot of millennials that are coming in and they too are looking to make the move. So I think this year we're gonna see fewer agents in the business, of course. 
Um, this last year, obviously, with the contraction in the market, has precipitated the need for those that aren't productive to get out of the business. I think that's healthy. Um, and those that want to stay in the business and want to produce, they'll see, you know, a, a little bit lower rates as we go through the year, which will bring more buyers into the market. So we'll have more transactions than we had last year, anywhere from about, you know, 4.2 to 4.6 million. Um, and we'll have fewer agents in the business. So I think as the year goes on, agents, it's going to feel better out there. It's, it's not going to feel quite as frozen, quite as stuck, quite as contracted. So, um, you know, I think good things ahead for this year, for sure. Yeah, it's interesting that you say it that way, because I, every coach that I listen to of all uh, makes and models are all saying the year is going to be this and going to be, it's almost all positive. So sure. I'm excited that you're in concurrence with that. And thank you for sharing the Remax side of it. I love that, that never thought of it the way that you just said it, but growth minded, meaning let's grow the brand, mm -hmm. but let's also, and I love this part, grow the productive aspect of the current right. agents that are in the, in the system. And I don't know how many times I've been told Amy, and you know, you were a big time recruiter when you were in our chair, sure. you know, I've been told by several agents in our market, you know, like I just had one text me today that I've been working on for four years. She said, I'll be at Remax one day. It's almost like she has to get her level of professionalism and productivity up to a certain level before she feels right in our network, which that I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I need to be better at explaining to her, hey, come here and you can get there faster. Right. Yeah, you know, that's so interesting, Tad, because when I, you know, came to Remax, literally, you know, it was it, it was a big jump, a big step. You know, I had to commit to the financial aspect. I had to commit to all of those things. And, you know, uh, those around me said, have you met yourself? You can do this. And so I'm so glad that I did it in those younger years where you're sort of fearless and, you know, moving forward. And I just knew that if I wanted to really be great in the business, that I needed to be around others that were doing more than I was so that I could learn and I could grow at an accelerated rate. So I suppose your next uh, text to this agent is, uh, is it one day today? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> is today the yeah. one day? <laughs> yeah, and I've been, um, we, she, she laughs. She says, I can't believe you're still talking to me after all these years. And I said, that's, I want yeah. you to have a better life. That's you know, right. I want you to, I want you to be able to, if you can't, if you're not going to do more transactions, I want you to be able to do them more efficiently and effectively than you in the network. But I really like the idea. I need to spend some time thinking about, how can I communicate what you just said to uh, someone sure. like her, where I, I say to her, yeah, come here and you can do it quicker. Sure. And I think, you know, I'd add to that too. It's like what you just said, you're not trying to get her. And I right. think so many other companies, it's like, I'm trying to get the agent. You're trying to serve the agent. You're trying to help the agent elevate their career. You know, that's what we do as brokers is we build agents and we build their ability to be excellent in this business and so you know i think it's a very different conversation than hey listen i've been talking to you about for four years because i care about you i care about your evolution and you know this isn't about me getting you it's really about me trying to accelerate your results and if you find that that's the right place that we're the right place for that you know the doors open but she too has to decide that she wants to take that leap right and that it's yeah. right for her yeah for yeah, sure. it's fun. It's also funny to me that you just said uh, you just said back when you were young and fearless. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you've looked at your business cards, your new ones that you just got are going to get. <laughs> uh, you're pretty freaking fearless now, I think. And I love it. <laughs> I love it. I think that's uh, I think you're still fearless, Amy, by the way, if somebody hasn't well, told you, that, you lately. that. Have you met yourself? <laughs> yeah, right. Have I met myself? <laughs> you True. said that. You said it about me. <laughs> um, all right. Well, so with that, let's talk a little bit about you. I know you don't love people don't love this question because they it means you have to talk about yourself for a second. But I'm a big <laughs> believer in the fact that we're all here. We were, go through experiences, which you just explained to us. We are gifted in certain ways. Sure. Um, uh, I believe that we all have a role in this universe. You just said the word universe, so I'll use it. And we have to find that role and do it. And if we don't, nobody will, <laughs> you sure. know, and so it get, gets left undone. I call it your superpower. What do you think your superpower is? If like Amy had to do something, you were put here to do something, what is it? <laughs> You know, I think, um, you know, first of all, I'll preface this with the fact that I have been heavily, heavily coached. 
Um, mm -hmm. I have invested mm -hmm. in coaching for over 20 years. I think it is an incredible investment in you realizing your potential and your best self, and that is ever evolving. The skill set that I had 20 years ago is completely different than the skill set that I have today. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think part of that process is, you know, tuning into what are my strengths and what am I really, really good at? And I think, you know, one of the things that I would say is that I am a people builder by nature. I am a driver of high, high performance teams. I love seeing people's ability and seeing their strengths and helping them elevate um, and, and coming in and taking problems and making them simple by leveraging people's strengths. I think, I think that's critically important for people as brokers. That's truly what you do every day is, is build people's performance and help them achieve at higher levels. And so it's probably what attracted me to the broker chair right off the bat. And now here, you know, I, I've been able to use that skill set um, in many, many of the teams that I've been responsible for running. And so it's just a it's become part of my DNA and it's it's what I love to do. You know, I'm a leader by nature. Um, I enjoy leadership, but I also enjoy people and helping them understand where do I fit here? What's my role? Why is it important? And where are we going? You know, so that we can make sure that we're all moving in the same direction towards a collective, um, you know, goal. And uh, so, you know, I think that's it. Yeah, I could see that. And you, you we're, we're lucky if that's truly uh, your superpower, then we're lucky to have you because it'll be, <laughs> well, you'll be able to that. make things that seem complicated, seem more simple to us and um, et cetera. So I'm excited. I'm excited about that. I think it'll be a fun, it'll be fun to watch that unfold. And thank you for sharing what your superpower is. I want to throw not a curveball, but ask you a question that I didn't tell you I was going to ask Go you because I didn't think about it until just now. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite other than um, the home of the top agent? I actually had someone tell me the other day, it kind of annoyed me. He said to me, he said, he said, you know, you, you guys, that's been y'all's shtick for so long talking about age, per agent productivity. That's just Remax's shtick, like it was a sales thing. I'm like, it's based on numbers, right? I mean, it matters if you think about it, but what's your favorite part other than like home of the top professional, what's your favorite part about Remax? Like, is it like, give me a tool or give me a, a relationship or an opportunity, just something about it that we might not be thinking of that you just love um, being there day to day. You know, I honestly, it, it for me, it is and probably will always be the network. Um, right. And honestly, it translates to this side as well. The people here at headquarters absolutely care about the network. Every single day, you know, they are working hard to try to make sure that what they're delivering to you is relevant, it matters, um, and everybody really works to excel. And so, you know, that's who our network, that's our network as, as worldwide really is it's you know we are the leaders our mission and our vision is to be the worldwide leaders and you know we are the worldwide leaders because we have a great culture of high performance i mean really i think that's something that i think is very very unique and very special it's not about you know, downlines and what can I get from you and that kind of mentality. It's all about there's enough for everyone together. You know, when we excel, we dominate. And I think, you know, that's truly what makes our, our market or our network special without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm a huge sports fan. I don't know if you follow sports or not, but I'm an avid sports fan. And I think it's interesting that you know, they're talking about the Kansas City Chiefs and, you know, I, I love some of our people love the Kansas, like David Weisman loves the Kansas City Chiefs. And they're talking about the fact that they may be considered a dynasty now that they've won two Super Bowls, getting ready to win three, mm -hmm. maybe. And they've been leading. They've been the lead. The, even the Patriots with seven Super Bowls. Uh, Tom Brady has. He's, will he ever be touched? And here the Remax Network has been leading for 50 years, or maybe right. maybe I'll say 48 years. Maybe it took Dave and Gail a little bit of time to get up and running, but sure. we've been the home of the top professional. We've been number one for so long. That's hard though, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. when we had number one market share in our market, we felt like I almost prefer to be number two sometimes because you're not the target. Mm -hmm. um, does it feel like that at headquarters, like on the ground, we feel that. Like we walk around, I've got my pen on, or I'm talking about, like you're expected to be a different 
kind of thing, but people want what you have. Do you feel that at headquarters too? Like you're number one and everybody's out to try to figure out what it is and try to catch you in some regard? Oh, for sure. But I think part of that, it plays into leading. You know, so, you know, we won't really go dive deep into it. We'll be able to do that, you know, in a few months. But, you know, the post-settlement world, for example, right? There's a lot of stuff going on out in the industry. The way I look at this is I say, look, we have been through lots of industry, you know, challenges. Think about in the 80s, we had double-digit interest rates. You know, you remember when Regulation Z came out and, and all the RESPA reform came out. It was like, oh, my gosh, this is going to hurt our ability to get our transactions closed. Um, you know, in the Great Recession, we had REOs and short sales and all those things. You know, my intention for how we navigate this is to help lead. And we will lead and we will equip our agents and we will make sure that they have what they need um, you know, to excel no matter what's happening out there. And I think that that is how you stay, you know, focused on your next 50 years is making sure that, you know, you don't just become a passenger, that you are constantly out there looking towards the future saying, where are we going next? And not just, you know, this is kind of a Wayne Gretzky thing. If you love, you know, sports, mm -hmm. he never looked at the puck. He always looked at where is the puck? Where am I trying to get the puck to go? Where is it? Mm -hmm. Where do I want it to go? And so I think that's really, really important here as we're looking towards our next 50 years is making sure that we're always looking out, um, not at the puck right here. And I think that that's where, you know, teams are guilty, companies are guilty when the, the industry gets noisy and there's a lot of things going on. You can't just look down right here and, and, and get right mired in that. You have to say, all right, what's the future? Where, how, where do we want to be in order to navigate this successfully? And so, you know, that will be my intention. And that's a little bit about my leadership style is, is making sure that we're always looking forward. And that's so interesting that you say it that way, because if you think about runners in a race, mm -hmm. if the person in the lead is looking forward, they don't even know where everybody else is. Right. They're so focused on the future and winning the race that you don't get distracted. But the minute you're trying to run a marathon and you turn around and look who's in second, you're going to trip probably or sure. get distracted. Your gait's going to be That's different. Right. So I love that forward thinking. And I have this quote that I love that I'm sure you'll, you've will you heard before, but the only way to lose is to quit. That's right. And like I, there's competitors in our market that have, they're doing amazing stuff. And, and we call them, we call them collaborators instead of competitors but they've done amazing things, but they're, they're wanting to be something. They're wanting to be us in a lot of regards. And sure. I tell Mandy sometimes, like we, we started this 19 years ago, 18 years ago for us, and they're 18 years behind us. The only way we lose is quit. That's right. The only way we lose is quit or lose or, focus. That's right. Or lose focus and take it. And that's why I think with the industry, and that'd be my advice to agents today, you know, with the noise and with everything, look, worry never did anything worrying and getting into the you know weeds about it you know it will it will never affect what you can do within your own network so your own sphere take the time that you're you're potentially concerned about this or you're spending time on this and interact with your database and go find somebody to serve you know that really is the difference between high productivity and maybe not is right. truly those high producers, they just stay focused and there could be a whirlwind going on, you know, around them. They're undeterred. They are focused on making sure that they're showing up every day and doing the activities that they know move the needle so that they can have more buyers and sellers to serve. And, and so I think that's my advice is look, it doesn't mean that we put our, our head in the sand about it. It doesn't mean that we don't, we don't take action or adapt or shift and all of those things, but we don't want to get too consumed in it. We don't want to spend too much time on it. What you need to do is make sure that you're out there serving buyers and sellers and that you're, you're in high contact. Yeah. It's so neat. It's neat to hear you say that. Like, I love to look at you. You're looking at the camera. I'm looking at the camera. It's <laughs> tech. Not, thank God for COVID because right? now we can do this and I can feel right. like I'm talking to you, but yep. I can tell you from my experience and I've been with this network for a long time, not as long as you, but I've been with for a while. Mandy's been with a little bit longer. When you say those words, what you just said, I've heard those words before, but I can tell they are authentic. 
from you. I can feel that you, and the reason is it's not anything special about Amy, but it's because you've been there. Sure. And I, and you've been like, when you say buyers and sellers and you say database, it means something to you because that sure. was your livelihood had to live it. for years. And then you had to train a team on how to do it. So mm -hmm. I want you to hear that that's why we, a lot of us feel so comfortable with all of this because we know that you understand Thank where you. we're coming from. And agents, I want you to hear me say that or listen to this podcast. I, I've known this woman for a long time. We're in good hands. And it's because it's not, she's not some superhero that's going to save the day, but she's been in the trenches with us and she understands what we go through. And that, that empathy um, it's really more than empathy. It's sympathy, compassion, understanding is going to go so far for us. Um, and I appreciate you. And you're a leader. And that's cool. I didn't know that much about you in that regard. But I can tell because I live with a leader. Um, I can <laughs> yes, tell. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so a few of them, actually. My 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 six-year-old Hazel is a leader. Good Lord. Ah, but, um, I can at six. I love it. I can feel it in you that you are confident. Um, you're clear, you're compassionate. So it's cool. It's cool. And I'm gushing, but I'm proud. I'm excited. I'm excited. Thank more you. excited than I thought that well, I thought you know, I would be. So. You know, Tad, one thing that I should mention is you and I both were leading agents during the Great Recession, right? Right. right. And so I really feel like, you, you know, you in particular, you are in a position to help agents excel you know, given the market conditions, because we're nowhere near the Great Recession time, but it might feel a little different, feel the same way because of the contraction that they feel. We had agent bloat in the industry, right? It it happened pre-Great Recession, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll feel that again this year. But, you know, I think you probably feel much more equipped to lead through this, where you understand exactly what they need to do in order to excel, um, given the contraction. Would you agree? Oh yeah, hundred percent. And it, once you've been there, once you've been there, you can you can read about it, you can <laughs> study it, you can talk about it with people, you can interview people. Uh, but when you've been in the seat and you have to make the hard decisions um, and try and lead, just like you said, when you yeah. when you have to lead through, uh, that's why Navy SEALs fascinate me. Like they're oh, training, and they don't just read about it. No. I mean, they they do it. And the goal is to get them in situations that when they get in real wartime, that they'll go, huh, I got this. No, you big know. Deal. we planned for this. Yeah, we expected this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And you've been it's, it's cool because you've been at the dining room tables trying to get somebody to list with you. You've been sure. in a team meeting during the recession when there weren't enough leads for the team. And you were like, what the heck do we do? You've had to make hard decisions like laying off staff or sure. or whatever, get firing clients. You've done it all. So um, it's it's cool to see you where you are. And uh, I'm excited to watch it happen and be a part of it happen. I want you to know that you've got our support and if you need anything, you. you're not, she would need anything from little old South Carolina, but we've got we your back. We love South Carolina. You guys are growing back. like mad. <laughs> we've got your back. So I've got a couple more questions as we wrap up. I want to just ask you, because the 30 minutes has flown by like I knew it would. What is a book that you could recommend to us? I'll put it in the show notes and we'll attach to it and um, that the listeners might appreciate. You know, I was listening to a podcast, so mine is not a book today, but it is a podcast and one that I listen to all the time. It is Finding Mastery with Dr. Okay. Michael Gervais because he is a sports psychologist. Um, and so he is very, very into, you know, high performance, um, psychology of the pressure of high performance. And he has some of the most interesting guests on there and so obviously being a person who loves developing people who's very interested in leadership who's very interested in my own personal growth and evolution you know that podcast is absolutely incredible i was just listening to you know one with a four-star general talking about how they organize um, some of these key you know um, initiatives that he was involved in where he had to really organize communication amidst the various um, agencies. So, you know, um, uh, CIA, FBI, you know, all the various uh, military uh, arms and how tough that was because historically they didn't talk. It was sort of like, no, we don't talk to them and they don't talk to us and that kind of thing. 
but the nature of their mission at hand required that they do so. And so I just love that podcast because you know you can you can really learn a tremendous amount about varied challenges that you might experience, you know, when leading, you know, big big groups of people. And uh, so I just love that one. So that's I would say for our audience uh, very relevant if you're into leadership and and growth. No, that's excellent. And thank you so much because I'm a podcast junkie. I probably listen to more than I should. Finding Mastery, Michael Gervais. I appreciate that very much. Last question for you, my friend, although we need to do like six more episodes. I'm the luckiest <laughs> guy in the world. I I'd might be the, the first, I'm the first podcast interview maybe that you've had since you've been you president of Remax. I'm so yeah. proud of myself. Um, <laughs> tell me, so the name of the show is Rise Up in Real Estate. And the reason I created it a few years ago was I was looking for people to share with me what it is about their daily life that they do that's they might think is normal but that makes them rise above mediocrity. It's clear that you're not a mediocre person. You wouldn't be where you are or, or doing what you've done. And most people, I th in my opinion, most people aren't mediocre. They might act it, but they're not. Um, what is it that you do on a daily basis that helps you rise above that? Uh, some sort of daily practice that you participate in that maybe we could learn from? Hmm. Um, I would say uh, care is one. I legitimately care about individuals you know i i really try hard to you know especially when the day is compressed and it's busy and you know you're running around um you know i'll joke here but you know i've been accused of suffering from resting bitch face <laughs> <laughs> so, i would never say that about you by the way <laughs> but well but man i am a, i am a focused person and so when i am when i am rolling every now and again my face uh doesn't really really reflect how i feel inside which is usually pretty darn good. But I always try to pause and smile and look in people's eyes and say, how are you today? And I, I legitimately want to know, um, even when it's, it's super busy. Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's caring about people. I try always in the morning to send a couple of texts out to my inner circle, my family, you know, hey, I want you to know I love you, I care about you. Um, because I think we can just let our days just absolutely go on and on and on and we're working so hard to you know build a company for example but there's a whole bunch of people that make all of that possible that are around you so whether it's the team here or whether it's my family or my friends um, you know I just always want to make sure that I continue to to care you know, to the that's best a good ability. one. That's yeah. a good one. I've done a lot of these interviews and I've never had that as the answer, but I love that. <laughs> um, doesn't caring though, a follow-up question, doesn't that make you tired sometimes? Sometimes. Isn't it, isn't it a lot to carry sure. when uh, we find that caring for people is, it's just what we do. It's who, who I am. I'm that person, but it doesn't it get tiring. And what do you do to recover or, or give yourself energy or stay above that tiredness? <laughs> You know, I've been accused also of wearing my heart on my sleeve, so to speak. Um, I think my younger self felt like I had to be a little bit more um, stoic about things than I do now. Um, as you get older, you realize that everybody's pretty human. And so now I don't mind, you know, saying, you know, man, I am just worn out. You know, I'm just worn out today. I'm just feeling a little tired. And what I find is that if you're just constantly super stoic and you're never honest about that, you start to become maybe seen as robotic and you rob other people of the ability to care about you. So I think, you know, I think it's a two-way street and, and there's, a, there's a balance there, but I think I'm more honest about it where I'm just like, I just don't have it at the moment. I, I just need to recharge for a second. And I'll go do that. I'll go ride my horse or I'll spend time with my family or whatever it is. But um, but I don't mind telling people and just saying, man, I'm tired today. <laughs> yeah, it's part of being all your authentic self. Yep. And I'm so disappointed that I wasn't the one that said horse first because I knew I knew that about <laughs> you. And I forgot to I forgot to mention it because I was so excited about everything else. But listen, I, guys and gals that are listening to the show today, you just had the opportunity to hear the new Remax worldwide president amy lester tell her story amy it has been a joy i cannot wait to see you at r4 but i'm gonna be honest i'll be looking for your resting bitch face at some point <laughs> while you're You'll see it you're gonna while see you're it. going to and from the stage or <laughs> you're talking to someone in the hallway i'm gonna pay or you're having coffee in the morning i'm gonna try to find it and i'm gonna text you and say i found it i saw but, it yeah i saw it but it is an it's been a pleasure talking to you i'm glad we had a chance to connect and thanks for giving so freely to uh, my network and if somebody wanted to 
to contact you or find you? Is Are you on social media? Do you have yep. uh, a website? Tell us how we can find you if we want to. I am. You can find me all over social media if you just, uh, you know, type in Amy Lessinger. And then also my email here. I am never afraid to give it out. Um, it's amy at remax.com. Very easy. A-M-Y at remax.com. So I love hearing from people. Believe it or not, I actually see them. I read them. Um, and uh, time willing i spent a lot of time this weekend answering all of those emails um, because i i enjoy it and i enjoy the interaction with the network so um never be shy i'm always here all right thank you so much amy for taking your time and i can't wait to see you in a few weeks thanks my friend say hi to your lovely wife for me i'll do that thanks amy all right see ya Bye -bye. well hey that's a wrap folks Thank you so much for listening to Rise Up in Real Estate. If you liked hanging out with us today, please find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Rise Up in Real Estate. Also, follow us right now on your favorite podcast host to hear more episodes. We really appreciate you spending some of your time with us. And until next time, let's do each other a favor and all help each other rise up. Rise up.